For more on the situation of the Rohingya refugees, let's go to DW Southeast Asia correspondent Bastian Hartek. He joins us from Bangkok. Hi, Bastian. This was a highly anticipated speech, as we said. Uh, what Aung San Suu Kyi had to say, will it be enough to silence her critics internationally? Well, I don't think so, Sumi, because she hasn't said a word about the role that the security forces that the Myanmar army played in these clearance operations, as she calls them. And if you ask the refugees that come across the border into Bangladesh, they will almost unanimously tell you horrific stories of brutality of soldiers coming into their villages, burning down their houses, shooting at civilians, uh, kidnapping uh, women, and of course, all those stories can't be independently verified, but the reason, the main reason why they can't be independently verified is because the Myanmar government and the security forces have been blocking independent access to the conflict area. So it sounds almost ironic when Aung San Suu Kyi in her speech today invites the international community to come and have a look for themselves, what's going on in that area, but at the same time saying, well, but we can only let you into those areas that we think are, are, are safe for you to visit. So that doesn't sound like like the unfettered access that uh, observers have been demanding, is, um, especially a UN fact-finding mission that has been trying to get into that conflict area for months to exactly verify those claims that are being put forward from both sides and to ascertain what really happened there and who is to blame, Sumi. Bastian, just across from that region uh, in Bangladesh, a lot of refugees are sheltered in camps and you visited them. Uh, what have you been seeing there? The situation in those camps is absolutely chaotic. There are more and more people coming in every day, and they're all heading to those uh, makeshift, many of the makeshift refugee camps where they hope to find shelter, where um, they hope to find aid. But, um, uh, but, but it's very difficult f for them because the aid that's coming in isn't sufficient for, um, for that massive number of people that has come in over, um, over, over the last few weeks, more than 400,000 have a look at this report. They keep on coming. But with hunger and illness spreading, it's a race against time. Bastian, let's come back to you now. We saw there in your report dire conditions in those camps. And you said in that report that a lot of the aid is being organized by private citizens. What can the international community do right now? Well, I think we're already seeing the, uh, a major relief effort uh, is already on the way, but it just takes time to get there. The big aid organizations like UNHCR, for example, like IOM, they're already airlifting relief goods into Bangladesh. Now, they need to get them to the people on the ground, and that's no easy task because, first of all, this is a very remote area. The airport, the closest airport in Cox's Bazar is a very small airport, so big planes can't land there. So they have to airlift those goods into Dhaka and then drive them down or, or deliver them with smaller airplanes to, to that region, um, and, and, and then they have to get them to the to the people and now that's the next challenge because in order to do that they need a certain amount of infrastructure. Most of all they need stable camps which uh, the, the Bangladeshi government has said they will set up now or with the help of these agencies because they need to distribute that aid in an orderly fashion to make sure that first of all they're not risking uh, the outbreak of riots over food and over aid there and secondly them to make sure that it really reaches the people who need it most first Sumi. DW's Bastian Hartig reporting on the Rohingya refugee crisis. Bastian thank you very much.